Roku reported their latest earnings report after the market closed on Thursday. Now, at the start, the stock was up around 10%. Now, at the time of making this video, pre-market, the stock is down 4.4%. Quite a roller coaster of a ride. Right now, the company is worth close to $9 billion. Year to date, it's down more than 30%. What exactly has happened? Because the numbers, if you look at the highlight numbers, they're not bad, not bad at all. But as we know, just because one quarter is good doesn't mean that the market likes what it heard with regards to guidance. And that's probably where the problem was. More on that in just a second. First of all, thank you all for all the support you've been giving me for, I mean, since the start of the year, it's been quite amazing. Very, very close to reaching 40,000 subscribers. So thank you very much for all the support. If you're not subscribed yet, maybe hit that subscribe button. It's free. You can always unsubscribe later. If you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and in the pinned comment to get the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to full.com forward slash couch investor. Thank you very much. So let's first start with the key results. As always, total net revenue was $882 million. That's up 19% year over year. Platform revenue also up 19% year over year to 755 million million dollars but i'll add a bit more commentary on that when it comes to guidance gross profit was 388 million dollars that was up 15 percent year over year and then in my opinion yes despite the short-term struggle especially when it comes to profitability of things because it's still a money losing business right now but it's about what happens when they turn a profit because if you look here at the streaming households that was 81.6 million an increase of 1.6 million quarter over quarter, up 14% year over year. Streaming hours, 30.8 billion, up 5.7 billion hours year over year. ARPU improved a tiny bit quarter over quarter, was basically flat year over year. And this was also their third consecutive quarter of positive adjusted EBITDA and free cash flow. Now, with regards to devices revenue, of course, this is just a small part of their business, but as they ramp up their own Roku products, the more they ramp up, the more they sell, the less expensive it will be for them overall, right? It makes sense. If you're investing quite a lot to build products, if you're only selling, producing a fraction of your goal, of course, in the financials, it will look quite bad. So devices gross profit, a loss in this case, 6.1 million. Overall, total gross margin was 44.1%, down 1.5 percentage points year over year. Flat is also down a little bit quarter over quarter. As for total operating expenses, that's down 16% year over year, also down quarter over quarter. Which is, of course, what we wanted to see. We wanted to see the company actually operate quite well, but reduce the cost. Now that they've reduced the cost, they can still show us, look, we're still growing quite nicely. So the road to profitability, in my opinion, is a bit better now than before. With regards to adjusted EBITDA margin at 4.6%, that's up 14 percentage points year over year. Free cash flow that's in the trailing 12 months, $426.8 million. Cash flow from operations also trailing 12 months, $456 million. Now with regards to outlook, they estimate total net revenue of $935 million, total gross profit of $410 million, and adjusted EBITDA of $30 million. Looking into the second half of the year, they anticipate normal seasonal spend in sales and marketing for devices, which will cause adjusted EBITDA to slightly moderate relative to the first half of the year. We remain confident on our ability to accelerate the growth of platform revenue and continue to grow adjusted EBITDA and free cash flow in 2025 and beyond. We are deepening relationships with third-party platforms, including DSPs, retail media networks, and measurement partners, which by the way, this was something that they were not doing before and actually reluctant to do it before. Now, it's been, I think, a couple of quarters that they're talking about that, so that's quite positive. But looking at Outlook, I think the market was just expecting a bit more for them. Right now, they might not really believe what Roku is telling them, especially not with regards to adjusted EBITDA, but there is a reason why Q2 looks a bit weak-ish. They said here during the earnings call, the comp is the reason for the sequential decline in growth rates from Q1 to Q2. To answer your question specifically of the 10% growth that they guided for Q2, they would say, think of platform growth as very high single digit growth rate, inclusive of 606, more than that in a second. And if you were to exclude 606, the 606 adjustment in Q2 of last year, we would be in low double digit growth rate for platform revenue. 
with regards to that number. They had a positive adjustment in Q2 and Q3 of last year for the platform revenue. That is obviously adding to difficult comp. Now, Q1 was a pretty easy one because, well, last year it went from negative 1%, then Q2 to plus 11%. So that's why you're seeing some weakness in the growth rates. But the market, again, thought that the company was maybe reaccelerating growth. So even with that, let's say, tough comp, it should have done a bit better. Then continuing here, as always, the Roku operating system was again the number one selling TV OS in the United States and Mexico, representing approximately 40% of TV sold in each country. Streaming hours grew 23% year over year as viewers continue to shift to TV streaming. During the same period, hours on traditional TV in the US fell 13% year over year, according to Nielsen. With regards to the Roku channel, that became the number three app on the platform in Q1 by both reach and engagement with streaming hours up 66%. There was only beaten, that was only beaten by Netflix and YouTube. So quite a popular app on their platform which of course is advertising driven. Now during the call, they did talk a bit about their home screen and how they could better monetize that in the future, changing the UI a little bit, having some promotions there for the streamers, for some shows, as you can see right here, the Rich Eisen show is sponsored here, presented by BMW. They say they have multiple things up their sleeves to better monetize that. I mean, it's the first thing you see when you open your TV, so of course, it's a big luxury, especially for something that is in your living room in people's houses. I think there is a big opportunity there for them to monetize that first view. They also say here that in Q1, streaming services distribution activities grew faster than platform revenue overall, benefiting in part from price increases for subscription-based apps on the platform. Live sports are still accelerating the shift of viewers from traditional TV to streaming and were a driver for SVOD signups on our platform in Q1. For this year's Super Bowl, they drove signups for Paramount Plus through both premium subscription in the Roku channel and the Paramount Plus direct-to-consumer app. Roku Pay, the payment and billing services, makes it easy for both viewers and content partners to transact subscriptions. We are focused on the large opportunity to grow the share of subscriptions on the platform that are built through Roku Pay. Then with regards to advertising activities, the year-over-year -year growth in video advertising across the Roku platform outperformed both the overall ad market and the traditional linear TV ad market in the United States. The consumer packaged goods, retail, and auto verticals grew, while insurance remained challenged, of course, with the high interest rate environment, inflation, stuff like that. And here, going back to my point, home screen and video ads on the Roku platform reach US households with nearly 120 million people on a daily basis in Q1. So there is a huge, huge opportunity here to monetize that. But of course, execution is key. We've seen ARPU being flat-ish for quite a while now, despite having more households, more streaming hours, etc., etc. So yeah, it's time to start monetizing your existing user base. And there's definitely quite some opportunities there. Looking at the stock right now, like I said, after hours, the stock went up 10% and now it's down 4%. So yeah, on the weekly, we're going to be exactly where we're at the start of this week and last week. And back in October of 2023, RSI is going to be still a bit low-ish, but nowhere near being oversold. Overall, for long-term investors, I believe you have to be patient, but execution here is key. It's great to hear some stories. Yes, I just said EBITDA positive, free cash flow positive, etc., etc. But if you look at all the other players in the advertising markets, I mean, they're killing it. So it's time for Roku to start doing the same. Of course, do share your thoughts down in the comment section below. If you enjoy this type of videos, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.